Today on MTG on Pat, we're taking a look at Magic the Gathering Game Night. This is the 2019 edition, age 13 plus, so this is one that we took a look at last year. Um, they've released this new version, so let's see what we've got here. So you get five 60 card decks with a premium foil card in each one, five spin down life counters, Five life counter platforms, whatever that is. Five reference cards, 15 double sided tokens, 20 plus one plus one counters, and a rule book. Alright, so this is the sort of thing uh, targeted at the board game market. If you've never played Magic before, or you just want to have like a family game night, this might be the thing for you. So we've got some planeswalkers on the cover there. Okay, so we've got the guidebook. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Here are the life total platforms, the plus one, plus one counters. So they had this thing in last year's edition as well. Okay, so we have spin down life counters in each of the colors. So that is pretty cool. And then five decks. So we've got glorious combat in white. Massive Might in green, blue is Aerial Acrobatics, uh, let's see, Black Endless Hordes, Zombie Hordes, that sounds fun, and Draconic Fury in red. Okay, so we've got this, nothing else in the bottom there, okay, so let's take a look at the rule book first, uh, I remember last year's was pretty cool. So this is Play Guide and Rule Book. So welcome to game night. There's the contents. How to set things up, how to play. So how to do two player games, three to five player. And then it's a bit of detail about each of the decks here. And Magic Gameplay. This is the thing that new players are gonna find very helpful. So how to read a Magic card. Tells you all about that. Got about power and toughness, your play area, game actions, and okay. Advanced topics, what's this? Targeting the stack. Okay, yeah, the stack is a confusing thing for a lot of people, so this should help clarify that. Parts of the turn, and a glossary, so many terms. Now this might seem overwhelming, um, it'll take a fair while to pick it up. Usually after a week or two of playing, you can pretty much um, understand everything, but yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve, so I think that booklet is very helpful. So this game night goes for about, I think it was $35, you might find it for $40, so around there in US dollars. Okay, we start off here with the red deck, Draconic Fury, burn away early threats and let your dragons rule the battlefield. So this is the aggro deck. So that is pretty cool. We have a, let's, uh, got the foil there, but let's go through the mana base first. So the mana base is the lands in the deck and I think they, uh, yeah, that's distributing them throughout the deck, which is going to make this a little annoying. Um, so let's see, we've got mountains. All right, so I'm gonna quickly count these up and see how many we've got. Okay, so 26 mountains, unless I miss some. So now we'll go through the deck proper here. We get a nice foil fiendish duo. So this is a mythic. You can tell by the orangey color there of that icon. Creature Devil, 5-5 five, five for 6 with First Striker for Source with dual damage to an opponent. It does double that damage to that player instead. So aggro decks are all about getting in early damage. Lots of small creatures, except this one has a huge Akum Hellkite. Creature Dragon, 4-4 four, four for 6. That's a rare based on the gold color there. With Flying Landfall, whenever a land enters battlefield under your control, Akum Hellkite does 1 damage to any target. If that land is a mountain, it deals two damage to that opponent or player instead. Okay, so this is the dragon deck, yep. Leftless Dragon Queen, another rare legendary creature dragon 6646 six, six, with flying. Whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. 
One and a red dragons you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. Dracul Seth Moor of Flames. Legendary creature dragon seven seven. Whoa. For seven with flying. Whenever it attacks, it deals four damage to any target and three damage to, of, to each of up to two other targets. Okay. Glint Horn Buccaneer. So another rare creature Minotaur Pirate two four for three with haste. Whenever you discard a card, it deals one damage to each opponent. One on a red discard a card, you get to draw a card. Activate this ability only if Glinthorn Buccaneer is attacking. Okay, so now we're moving on to uncommons with the silver color there. Good day, Dragon Mage. So with flying, each player discards their hand, draws seven cards. Okay, Goblin Smuggler, creature Goblin Rogue. This is a common based on the black color there with haste. So pretty cool, love the goblins, so we're going to get a couple of those, yep. Kelden Raider, so this one gets you some card draw. Two of those, Pack Mastiff, so pumping up creatures, giving them plus one, plus zero. If they're Pack Mastiff, so we get, oh, three, four of those. Okay, so four is a complete playset. That's typically the maximum number of each card you can have in your deck. Rip Scale Predator with Menace. So there's a lot more high-end creatures here than I would have expected for a red aggro deck. Act of Treason, so this gives you control of a target creature, that sounds fun. Chandra's Outrage, just dealing damage pretty much. Shock, that's a classic dealing damage outright. Tectonic Rift, destroying land, interesting. Dragon Egg, so when it dies, create a 2-2 two -two red dragon creature token. So two of those. Kagan Dragon Rider. So as long as you control a dragon, this guy has flying. So flying is a very helpful thing. Let's you get over the other creatures of the opponents. Spark Tongue Dragon with flying. So you, if you pay that extra cost, it can deal damage to any target. So two of those. Voldaren Duelist. When it enters the battlefield, target creature can't block this turn. Zealot of the God Pharaoh. So for four and a red, it deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Howling Golem. So this is a colorless. Uh, you might find this in multiple decks here. We'll have to keep an eye out for it. Whenever it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. Brute Strength. Pumping up creatures, giving them trample. Nice. Destructive Tampering. So you can either destroy an artifact or creatures without flying can't block this turn. Lightning Strike. So it deals three damage to any target. So classic, and then the tokens here, which are not for this deck, obviously. So this would be the green deck. I'm not sure why they split them up like that. So we get a dinosaur token. Ah, there we are, dragon on the other side. Okay, so the tokens are special cards that get generated by other cards in the deck. We get a zombie here, another dragon, dinosaur, and dragon. Okay, so that was the red deck. So we'll pop that over there. Next up we'll go for blue. And by the way, this sort of thing, um, there's a commander format in Magic, which is typically multiplayer. Uh, this would be a nicer introduction than commander, I would say. Uh, although commander is where a lot of new players start, um, but it's just, there's a lot more cards to worry about, a lot more mechanics. It could be a lot more confusing. So. This is good for a family game night, I think. So then I will count up the islands real quick and we'll see how many we've got. Okay, so 26 there. They're keeping similar proportions. So almost half the deck. So you've got 60 cards in your deck. 26 of those are lands. Aerial Acrobatics. Defend yourself with spells while your creatures fly to victory. Okay, so blue is the color of control, so you want to control the gameplay. Here we have another Mythic Sphinx of Enlightenment. Creature Sphinx, 5-5 five, five for 6 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent draws a card and you draw 3 cards. So, a lot of card draw in blue decks, you might notice. <coughs> Engulf the Shore, so here's a rare instant for 4. Return to their owner's hands, all creatures with toughness, less than or equal to the number of islands you control. That could be handy. Bouncing all those creatures back. Rivers Rebuke, Sorcery for six. Return all non-land permanents, target player controls to their owner's hand. Okay, so 
bouncing creatures and so forth back to their owner's hand. Agent of Treachery, another rare here when it enters the battlefield gain control of target permanent. Beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. So let's say two, three for seven, sort of a top end creature there. Dungeon Geists, Creature Spirit, three, three for four with flying. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls that. Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Dungeon Geists. Then we've got a Air Elemental with flying, so moving on to the uncommons here. A couple of those, Brineborn Cutthroat with flash. And whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn per day, plus one, plus one counter on Brineborn Cutthroat. So, flash is pretty much, you can just flash it in whenever, whoever's turn it is. Fun little mechanic. Cloudkin Seer with flying, gets you some card draw. So, two of those. Frost Lynx, Elemental Cat. You can tap target creature and opponent controls. It's pretty fun. Moat Piranhas with Defender. Yes, there are Piranhas in Magic. Two of those, Warden of Evos Isle with flying, so creatures with flying cost one less to cast. It's pretty handy. So you'll see blue, I think blue and white, you have a lot of flyers as well, but I noticed the red one, they had the dragons, so there are exceptions to every rule. Captivating Gyre, so return up to three target creatures to their owner's hands. Unsummon, again, return target creature to its owner's hand. Some people hate control because it doesn't allow you to play. Um, pretty much bouncing cards back, drawing cards. Uh, winged Words, this spell costs one less to cast if you control a creature with flying. You get to draw two cards. A couple of those. Avon Wind Mage with flying. Whenever you cast an or sorcery spell, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. A couple of those guys. Cryptic Serpent. And this spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. So, seven casting costs. That's pretty crazy. But you can get it out earlier there. Salvager of Secrets. When it enters battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's unusual. Normally black is about bouncing things back from the graveyard. Here he is, Howling Golem. We saw him in the previous deck. Whenever it attacks a block, each player draws a card. Claustrophobia. So you can enchant a creature and tap it when it enters battlefield it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step so you're locking up that creature decision paralysis tapping creatures again so two of those dramatic reversal untap all oh, non-land permanents you control and i like we've got the whole gate watch here we've got gideon liliana ajani jace and nissa so those are common planeswalker characters in the game Gale Strike, so tapping creatures, drawing cards. Rise from the Tides, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. That is very unusual. So black and blue. Okay, now soldier token, there's a zombie. So that's what we need for that one. Dragon, zombie, dragon, and zombie. So I'm thinking when you play this, you want to just put the tokens somewhere in the middle, maybe, so people can grab a token if they need it. You want to make it, make sure they're not um, along with the player's deck. So let's rearrange things here. Next, we'll go for white. Glorious combat. Power up your creatures by attacking early and often. So what I'm expecting to see here is a lot of token generation, a lot of smaller creatures, also a lot of flyers. So those are typically associated with white. And then in a moment we're going to count up the number of planes. So those are the lands that you use for white decks. And see how many we get. It's probably going to be the same as all the others with 26. So let's rearrange things like so. And count up the lands. Yep, so 26 of these as expected. Okay, so take that off there. Here's our foil mythic. We get a High Cliff Felidar, creature cat beast. Whoa, 5-5 five, five for 7 with vigilance. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, choose a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. Destroy those creatures. Oh, that's a bit of a game changer. Kytheon's Irregulars, Creature Human Soldier 4-3 for 4 with Renown 1. 
So that means when this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't renowned, put a plus one plus one counter on it and it becomes renowned. And for two white tap target creature, Zeltalpa Primal Dawn, legendary creature, elder dinosaur, fantastic. 4-8 for 8, this is a massive beast with flying, double strike, vigilance, trample and indestructible. Another rare here, Loxodon Life Chanter, creature, elephant cleric, 4-6 for 6. For six. When it enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become the total toughness of creatures you control. It's pretty cool. Five and a white gets plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is your life total. Safara Sky's Blade, legendary creature, angel, seven, seven, four, seven mana. Whoa, you may pay white and tap four untapped creatures you control with flying rather than pay this spell's mana cost. So you can get it for free, basically. Uh, well, not quite free, you're tapping your creatures. With flying lifelink, other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. That will be tough to defeat, I think. Griffin Protector, so now we're moving on to commons here with flying. Whenever another creature enters battlefield under your control, this guy gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Inspiring Captain, uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. When that enters the battlefield, you get two of those. Squad Captain with Vigilance, attacking doesn't cause this creature to tap. So it enters with a plus one plus one counter on it for each other creature you control. Okay, so white decks, a lot of plus one plus one counters here. Two of those. Steadfast Sentry with Vigilance. When it dies, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So we're getting three of those. Inspired Charge. Creatures you control get plus two plus one until end of turn. Pacifism. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. That's fun. Nice artwork on that one. Raise the alarm, create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. Okay, so here are the tokens I was talking about. So we get three of those. And then in the middle, the way I stack this, so we got the dinosaur soldier, dinosaur soldier, dinosaur soldier. Okay, so we'll set those aside and continue here. Uncommons, Consul's Lieutenant, creature human soldier with fight, first strike, renowned one. And whenever it attacks, if it's renowned and other attacking creatures, you can all get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So again, pumping up the creatures. Fiend Binder. Whenever it attacks, ta target creature defending player controls. Okay, so two of those. Patron of the Valiant. So another angel with flying. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. All right, two of those. Relief Captain, when it enters battlefield, support three. So again with the counters, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to three other target creatures. Step Glider with Flying Vigilance, uh, you can pay the cost there. Uh, each cre or target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it gains Flying and Vigilance until end of turn. Topan Free Blade with Vigilance, Renown one. Okay, so a lot of Vigilant creatures. Howling Golem, there he is again. Mighty Leap, so pumping up the target creature plus two plus two, give it flying to end of turn. Nice little combat trick there. Take Vengeance, destroy target tapped creature. Okay, so that is the white deck. Some pretty cool strategies there. So you'll notice that each deck has a very different approach to the way they go about things. So green is all about the giant creatures and how can you get the giant creatures onto the battlefield earlier so we'll dig through here move those lands aside count them up and see what we've got okay what a surprise we've got 26 of those so, massive might, overwhelm your opponents with enormous dinosaurs, sounds fun, we get a foil mythic, earthshaker giant, creature giant, druid 664, 6 mana with trample, when it enters the battlefield, other creatures you can all get plus 3, plus 3 in game, trample until end of turn, craziness, galta primal hunger, legendary creature, elder dinosaur, 12, 12 for 12 mana, that is insane. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. Interesting. And he has Trample as well. Ripjaw Raptor with Enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, draw a card. 
Voracious Hydra, 0 1 for X and 2 green with trample, enters battlefield with X, plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And when it enters the battlefield, you can either choose to double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, or have it fight target creature you don't control. Alright. Wake Root Elemental, another rare here. So for 5 green, untapped target land you control, it becomes a 5 5 elemental creature with haste, it's still a land. That's a fun thing, turning lands into creatures. And then a common here, Ferocious Pup. So when it enters battlefield, create a 2 2 green wolf creature token, which I don't think we've seen any wolf tokens yet. Maybe they're in the black deck there. Two of those, Howling Giant with Reach, so it can block creatures with flying. When it enters battlefield, create two, two, two green wolf creature tokens. Okay, so you're going to need to locate those tokens or just make some. Leafkin Druid, you can tap add green. If you control four or more creatures, add two green instead. So green is all about ramping up with mana there. So you get a couple of those. What have we got? Three. Silverback Shaman with Trample. When it dies, draw a card. Two of those guys. Growth Cycle. So give the target creature plus three, plus three until end of turn. It gets an additional plus two, plus two until end of turn for each card named Growth Cycle in your graveyard. Whoa. It's pretty cool. So three of those. Overcome. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two and gain trample until end of turn. So that allows you to get all that damage through to your opponent. Plummet. Destroy target creature with flying. Crested herd caller with trample. Enters battlefield, create a 3 3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. So there's a lot of land based creatures here. But this guy, Grazing Whiptail, he has reach, so you can block those creatures with flying. Two of those. Howling Golem, what a surprise to see him again. Ranging Raptors with Enrage whenever it's still damage. You may search your library for basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. So two of those thundering spine back, other cre or not other creatures, other dinosaurs you control get plus one plus one. Five and a green, create a three three green dinosaur creature token with trample. A couple of those guys. Spidery grasp. Untapped target creature it gets plus two plus four and gains reach until end of turn. So two of those Thunder Herd Migration. As an additional cost cast this spell, reveal a dinosaur card from your hand or pay one. You get to search your Library for a basic land card, put it on a battlefield tapped. So a couple of those. Get three of those, and then the tokens. We get a zombie. Okay, here's the wolf. Two two wolf token. Zombie wolf, zombie, and a wolf. Okay, so that is the green deck. That one actually looks pretty fun with all those huge dinosaurs. And finally, rounding things out, we have the black deck. So I would say my two favorites here. Probably red and black, also known as the Rakdos color combination. Um, that's something you could probably do as well here is um, if you want to add a bit of variety to your games, you could combine colors. So do like a red-black deck and then balance it all out. But then you're moving on to more advanced topics there, so it might be a bit much for newer players, but get some extra life out of this box. So let's count the lands here. Okay, so 26 lands as expected. Now we have the Endless Hordes. Master Death as your zombie hordes overcome all obstacles. That sounds fantastic. We get a foil mythic calculating lich. Creature Zombie Wizard 5-5 five, five for 6 with Menace. Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents, that player loses one life. Some nice foiling on that guy. Liliana's Mastery Enchantment for 5, so this is also a rare. Zombies you control get plus 1 plus 1 when Liliana's Mastery enters battlefield. Create 2, 2-2 two, two Black Zombie Creature Tokens. Torgar Famine Incarnate Legendary Creature Avatar 7 6 four, 8 Whoa. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sack any number of creatures. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. And when he enters the battlefield up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total. Rounded down. Dread Presence! Creature Nightmare 3-3 three, three for 4. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You draw a card and you lose one life. Or it deals two damage to any target and you gain two life. 
Villis Broker of Blood, legendary creature demon, 8848 mana. Whoa, another big one. With flying, pay a black, pay two life, target creature gets minus one, minus one to end of turn. And whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. Okay, now for the commons, we have a Gorging Vulture, delightful artwork there. With flying, when it enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. You gain one life for each creature card put into your graveyard this way. So, three of those. Grave Digger. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, this is an uncommon. A couple of those. A sanitarium Skeleton! Yes! For two and a black, return it from your graveyard to your hand. So, he's a fun one. Undead Servant, when it enters battlefield, credit to two black zombie creature token for each card named Undead Servant in your graveyard. So a lot of graveyard synergies here, you'll notice. Four of those guys, whoa. Blood for Bones, fantastic Seb McKinnon artwork there, love that, very distinctive style. So this is a sorcery for four, it's an additional cost of cards to spell, sack a creature, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Bone Splinters gets you to destroy target creature. Murder! Destroy target creature. So a lot of creature destruction going on. A Cursed Horde. Another zombie here for one and a black target attacking zombie gains indestructible until end of turn. Whoa! Carrion Screecher. I always think this looks like an overcooked chicken with flying. Crow of Dark Tidings. Flying when it enters bed food or dies. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Alright, Gavany Unhallowed, whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Lord of the Accursed, this is a cool one, I think this was from Armin Kett originally. Other zombies you control get plus one plus one for one and a black tap. All zombies gain menace until end of turn. Two of those, Tattered Mummy, another one from Armin Kett, when it dies each opponent loses two life. Couple of those, so uh, three of those. Oh, no deck would be complete apparently without a Howling Golem. Grasp of Darkness, giving target creature minus four, minus four until end of turn, so that will pretty much kill a lot of creatures. Couple of those. Rise from the grave. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Tokens, we get the wolf and zombie. Wolf, Zombie, and Wolf, and Zombie. So there we have it. That is the Black Deck. That is Magic the Gathering Game Night 2019 Edition. Leave a note in the comments. Did you either try last year's box, or are you looking forward to getting this one? I think it's pretty good value for what you get here. Great starting point for a family game night. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, for more Magic the Gathering unboxings and be sure to tap the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are released. Thanks for watching and have a great day.